Back on April 4th, 2015, I went to go see the Formula E Long Beach e Prix. That year, it was the first year of the Formula E series. And what was cool about the event at Long Beach for the e Prix is that the organizers had it free for everyone. It was free admission. With that, I definitely had to go. The only problem with it that day is that I had work in the evening, so I had to be back home by 4 p.m. With that, I had to make the most of my day. I made sure I got there early, just when gates opened for the public. And sure, to get in this whole experience of Formula E. This was my first time visiting an FIA sanctioned event. The FIA is the governing body of motorsports for motorsports series like Formula One. It was really exciting going to the Formula E Long Beach e Prix, as a lot of these drivers in this series at that time, they were former Formula One drivers. So normally, I go to Long Beach to check out the IndyCar series at the Long Beach Grand Prix. But it was cool to see the Formula E series make its way to Long Beach. And it brings in a whole bunch of different talent, different drivers from around the world. And also, it has a Formula One-esque style of organization and how the event runs. Within the event, they had an expo for fans called the Fan Village, where you can check out new electric vehicles like the BMW i8 at that time. 2015 BMW i8. As we look at footage of the event, I want to go over a little bit about the history of Formula E in its inaugural year. Like I mentioned, the inaugural season of Formula E started in 2014 and the season will roll into 2015. The first race of the season started in Beijing on September 13th, 2014. When I first heard the announcement of Formula E a couple miles back, it was exciting to hear because this is the future of racing. It was exciting to hear that there was a new racing series coming up and a very unique one. As advertised, Formula E is an all-electric racing series and they focus on zero emissions. The first season of Formula E had 10 races. Two of those races were held here in the U.S., one in Miami and the other in Long Beach. The last race of the first season of Formula E was a doubleheader where they had a race on Saturday and a race on Sunday. Going into that final race in London, it was a very close championship between Sebastian Buemi and Nelson Piquet Jr. When the checkered flag flew on that final race, Nelson Piquet Jr became the inaugural champion of Formula E. All right, we're looking at him right now. Uh, this is not qualifying. But the quickest out there is car number two. Sam Bird is the quickest out there. I'm the other sorry, the second quick to run. Sam Bird is uh, third quick, followed by the late Duval. Yeah, and uh, Jerome uh, DeMorcio is uh, next quick, also Nicola Prost. That's, that's, we're just crunching some numbers up here again, this is not qualifying. <laughs> when we were here yesterday, we were watching some of the team. After the practice sessions, I made my way back to the fan village. I checked out these stunt motor bicyclists. Again, this whole concept is everything's electric, and these bikes here are electric. Moving some wheelies down the front of the arena. Jack up on top of the jump box, holding a nice stopping down the front for you. Similar to the gas powered trials bikes, almost identical. 
cynical look into them. However, they do not run on gas. They are all electric. The charge usually holds about three, three hours, so you can ride these things actually longer than you can ride the gas power bikes. Jack coming down, warming up on the jump box for you, doing some big airs. Let's hear it for Jack, come on guys. Julian jumping in the mix. Also there was this display of electric bicycles where you could pump yourself or utilize the electric motor. And then of course K1 Speed had to be there for their use of electric go-karts. K1 Speed, which are known for their indoor karting facilities, brought their facility outdoors in the fan village. Formula E did have a support race for the Long Beach E Prix, and that featured local high schools that were given these electric go-karts to build for whatever STEM program these schools had. And what was cool is that they build these kit go-karts and one of the students would get to race it around Long Beach. It was the Formula E's way of promoting STEM education. So with the morning practice sessions, I went to the hairpin to check out the cars. At this point, I went to check out the chicane. As you can see, they actually shortened the Long Beach track, where instead of going all the way to the aquarium, they chicane into the other side of the shoreline and go down Pine. I wanted to get footage of the chicane because it is very unique and you don't see that with the normal Long Beach Grand Prix street circuit. Right by the uh, victory lane, the victory circle, the, the post. The end of the entry. John Eric Byrne, again, he had a uh, problem in turn five. He got into the fence about the left of uh, the left end. Rear end. You are on board right now with Jean Eric Byrne and Freddy, most for the victory. And that's the heart. Now up around the hairpin and on the shoreline with Jean Eric Byrne. And then underneath the BHL bridge, across the start of the finish line there. And now headed towards turn one and two. This is almost like a chicane thing. So we're looking for helmets now because it's hard to see the numbers. But they're, right now they're putting heat in those Michelin tires. Once again, I point out, look at the tires, they are not slick. They got uh, turned on very much very similar to the tires on the top. Uh, they use these Michelin tires uh, in all conditions. 
They have to bring a front tire and a rear tire to the previous version of the five sets. The rear two tires are just his own. I mean, they, they even talk. He wants to go down the freeway. Watch yeah, this and see where, where he comes around. He looks like he may be on a quick lap. Down shoreline towards turn number one. It's Sebastian Boyd. He has moved to seventh with a 57.261. D'Ambrosio moves to uh, eighth with a 57.267. Yeah. 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 The Mixmaster, Formula EJ. Replay right now, Tui car. Uh, this is what happened right here, that's why we're under a, a red. Here we got both the, you got the front and, you got both the front. But it, it was still rolling. Oh no, it did the, the left front. Yeah, I don't started, feel good. The left uh, front tire started doing the strip tease right there, didn't it? Uh, we slowed down. Now this is going to be the heartbreak in every time we turn five right now. five. But maybe in the end, maybe he just wants to space himself out and crap. He's not trying to get in a hot lap. Then you out, 12th with the 57.358. Rome D'Ambrosio, 57.267. Has not bettered himself. It's still D'Ambrosio 8. Bobby looks like he's really cutting a, a, a tight one right here. I mean, that's turning on to Pine right now. Boy, close to the wall right yeah. there on Pine. He's using up every bit of space he can. Heartbreaking. That's the corner. You really want to get that, get off that corner well to get on the back straightaway. Oh, yeah. it's faster. Purple. But none of the cars here in this session have better themselves after the attack. So far, it's blown up. That horse fell to the That's what a nice trick. And Daniel App has went to the top, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel App is on the pole right now. He's part number 66 with a 56.937. Now Boemi. Boemi. Boemi goes to the top. Sebastian Boemi. Boy, they were holding out, weren't they? It was time to get it done, and they did it. No, that was happening because you can, they were just right at the edge. Sebastian Boemi puts it on top with a 56.853. Daniel App is second quick with a 56.937. Nicola Prost is third quick with a 56.9. Then you got Nelson P.K. Jr. with a 56.9. And then uh, Lucas Degrassi is in fifth quick with a 57. The rest of the field all the way down to 19th quick is in the 57 range. Alain Prost right there. Boy, they're, they're all shaking hands right now. But Sebastian, boy, boy, put it on top. There's only 26 seconds left in the session before we go to, because that was it, boy, I'm telling you, we're going to watch this good thing, we're going to have to watch, maybe it's five left, but if you think he's excited about it, I'm telling uh -huh. you, boy, he put it on the pole, how about that, man, and you know, they, that was interesting, too, because they went through a red condition, and then they had to heat the wood, but he got the tires, they weren't better in themselves, and then, bam, yeah, yeah, boy, me and out, went to the top. So, yeah, they're done now. They're coming from the pit area, but wow. The session is over. Sebastian Boimi is on the pole in car number nine. Second quick is uh, 66 Daniel F. After finishing the qualifying session, I went back home. And once I was back home getting ready for work, I was watching the Long Beach e Prix on TV. It was an exciting race. In the end, Nelson Piquet Jr. won that race. After my initial visit, to the Formula E Long Beach e Prix. It was amazing to see these electric Formula vehicles race around Long Beach. These electric vehicles are so much quieter than their internal combustion counterparts. Like the motto of Formula E says, this is the future of racing. Fully electric racing is ever evolving. Like with traditional race cars, these electric race cars are used as a platform to help develop thoughts and ideas, 
products and units that go on to or are adapted in our consumer electric vehicles. The reason why I'm posting this vlog now is that this weekend the Formula E series is going into their sixth season and it all starts with their first race in Saudi Arabia in the Al Daria street circuits for the Daria E Prix. Be sure to check out the first race of the new season of Formula E at the Daria E Prix. You can actually check out the practice sessions on YouTube or on the Formula E website as this first event is a double header with two races, one on Friday and one on Saturday. On early Friday morning, Fox Sports 2 will cover the qualifying and the race on that channel again in the early morning of Saturday. On Fox Sports 2, they'll air the iPace Jaguar trophy as well as qualifying. Then it will transfer to Fox Sports 1 where they'll air the race of the Daria E Prix. The schedule I mentioned is for audiences in the US. Be sure to check your local listings or go to Formula E's website to check out where Formula E is showing near you. If you want to check out more from the Formula E series, may I suggest you check out their official YouTube channel where it features highlights and storylines and videos from the Formula E series, as well as full race coverage from the past seasons. I'll put a link in the description with the 2015 Long Beach e Prix, the full race coverage. That concludes this chronicle. Make sure to subscribe to the Spellgo YouTube channel for more of my content. Later in the future, I'll be talking about the 2016 Formula E Long Beach e Prix as shown on this shirt here. Thank you guys for watching.